Howdy howdy, back in the day when the forms were a thing, there were people whose raison d'etre, I hope I said that right, I'm not French, <laughs> was uh, solely participating on the Roblox forums. I was like that for a little while. Even with that in mind, people would often get bored from all the spam, shit posting, and pot stirring. For a fresh change of pace, people would often host these things called forum parties. <laughs> What the hell are these things? Basically, anybody at any time, if they were bored, would have a thread and call it whatever the forum was called, and then party. For example, if I posted in Roblox Talk, I would say RT Party. If I was on the Off Topic forum, I would say OT Party, and so on. The actual content of the thread would just link you to the game the original poster wants to play. Typically, you'd only find these types of forum parties on the aforementioned Off Topic or Roblox Talk. In this video, I'm going to be highlighting to you several games or game types that I've personally seen or played throughout my days as a forumer. I do believe I'm on fire. Molten Depths Minigames is a game made by Silent Swords, who you may now know as the project lead for the Sakuraverse franchise of games. Molten Depths was also chosen a lot for forum parties. It held all the checks to be a bona fide forum party place. It was polished, it was casual, and it was obscure. There's not much I could say about the game. It was your standard Roblox minigames experience, save for the minigames revolving loosely around the volcanic setting. The consequence for a lot of these games was, oops, you lost, go die in the lava. There have been a lot of mini games throughout Roblox's years, so having a theme or gimmick really helped some games stick out, this one included. That being said, this game has aged poorly, not from bugs, because somehow this game has managed to be playable throughout all these years. The only mini game I found to be buggy was this one, but theoretically you could still beat it. The thing about this game is it's just superfluous. Epic, Persona 299, Kid Lover Ripple, Nintendo minigames, rest in peace, are all minigame experiences that came during or after this place's inception. This place also only has like six minigames to choose from and they're all done better in other places. This place is decent, but there's not much of a point to playing this other than for nostalgic purposes. Thieves in the House was a uh, asymmetrical, thievery-based version of hide-and-seek, if I were to describe it. It's a round-based game where thieves have to steal as many valuables as they can while the homeowner has to kill them. The hard part was that the thieves matched the setting. The house was devoid of color, having most of its interior colored in black, so to aid in stealth, the thieves were also... I swear this is... I, I swear this is... It's not racist, it's just camouflage. They're... They're liter... Anyway, it made the valuables stick out more as they were depicted as shiny gold, not including the green of Robux piles. In order to counter the camouflage, the homeowner comes equipped with a pistol that can assist with detecting thieves. The weapon had a little radar of sorts of five squares, and the more red they got, the closer you were to a thief. Also, just the way the game plays out, you can see a thief moving if they're really close to you. Uh, it doesn't count for me because I'm blind as a bat. There's also audio cues, like the sound of a swipe every time a thief takes a valuable. Thieves in the house had an easy to understand gameplay loop. Its operation was very similar to something like Deception Infection, 
where the more time you spend in a single server, the more optimal you'll be able to play. Thieves in the House involves stealing money as a thief, or saving money as a homeowner, using the funds you accumulated to invest in better tools or equipment, using those tools and equipment to be better at saving or stealing money, rinse and repeat, and then you're awesome and stacked. It was fulfilling and it rewarded you for investing your time into single play sessions. Another game design choice that's really nice is that the game tends to send people back to the lobby happy. The most common game end status is that the time runs out and the thieves keep their winnings while the owner keeps the rest of the valuables that weren't stolen. It's a win-win a lot of the time. The only other game states are either the homeowner killing everybody or the thieves steal everything. But these were pretty uncommon conclusions to the game. I adore this game both as a forum party goer and as a regular Roblox gamer. I would boot this game up not just for forum parties, but for my friends as well. It was a game I cherished and admired through and through. It was even made by a notable R-tier. Healthy choices. Unfortunately, this game is broken due to Roblox updates. Doubly unfortunate is that both Healthy Choices and the Thieves in the Householder account got banned. This game has also grown more or less obsolete with time. The remaster by Vertical Ascent, while very fun, is unpopulated. There's also a franchise that's very similar to this game functionally, and that's the In Plain Sight series of experiences. Both are about hiding in plain view of the hunter while stealing as much loot as you can without being killed. Even then, those games have come to be niche and past their peak in popularity. I'd still recommend playing these remastered Thieves in the House if you're looking for a fun game to play with your friends. It was a staple for RT parties and my own little tribe. I'm going to be making a video on the remake in the coming weeks. Be sure to just subscribe to be on the lookout for it. Did the subscribe button go rainbow? I hear that's a thing that YouTubers can do. Uh, moving on. Personal servers, what a blast from the past! These were games that were sectioned off into their own little category. They only allowed one server to be run for each game, and the personal server would have a periodic autosave feature. Most games were like weird mini games with a lot of roleplay elements. This video by Epic Rika, although I personally think fucking sucks, is a pretty decent microcosm of personal server. Wait. No way! It's healthy choices! Mr. Thieves in the house! No way! <laughs> healthy choices! Anyways, the most common personal server types is actually of the building variety. The forums, predominantly RT, would host parties at personal building servers where they'd build and goof off. People on the forums were honestly more in interested in the wiring aspect. Lots of cars, lots of ships, and lots of griefing. People would often go to these places to grief and troll, not even form personal building servers, just personal servers in general. This is through the use of mass deletion, flooding, and C4 spam. These places died when personal servers died, which was around 2016. Even though forum parties were usually populated within obscure, niche, and unknown titles, or there were several games made by and for the forumers, this one game was quite the notable exception. So much so that it often see threads labeled not as RT Party, but as APOC Party. Apocalypse Rising was just so, uh, what do the kids say? Go to with the sauce? That forumers would often overlook their hipster contrarian ways in order to get some APOC going. You guys may know this game now as an abandoned, script kitty filled shithole, but back when it was popular, it was known as the state of the art Roblox game, the cutting edge, the golden standard, the premier selection of what the site had to offer. But even at its peak, your multi day streak of marauding and pillaging will come to an end because some script kitty will have had their way with you. 
Uh, oh! Oh! What? How do I get teleport? What? Huh? What? How did I die? Who? What? 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 Oh my god, this game sucks! This game is garbage! 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 Um, for those that don't know, which is a concerning amount of you, fucking new gens, Apocalypse Rising was a game made by developers Zolder Keth, Keith, Cucumber, and Gus Manak. I would describe it as an open world zombie survival game. It was a game of rage filled lows, but a game of illustrious highs. Getting you and your friends to have a hold on the server was such a fun thing to do, which is probably a reason why farmers love the game. I'm speaking out of my ass when I say this though, I never joined an APOC party. At least, I don't remember joining one. It was easy to have a group of people join in from the forums, make a group within the game, and just wreak havoc and have a lot of control whatever server they played. Formers are usually grizzled Roblox vets who have some years to them, so the teams were more competent than the standard solo queuing new gen layman. I want every gun we have to fire on that man. Apocalypse Rising was a game I frequented quite a lot for a decent amount of years. I feel like I had active and inactive spells. My inactive spells were caused by, you guessed it, cheaters. A lot of my deaths were caused by things outside of my control, and I'm sure that applies to a lot of you that played that game. It just wasn't rewarding having your grit and grind of a stacked inventory stripped away from you. All because some kid followed an easily accessible YouTube tutorial on how to exploit APOC. APOC kind of died alongside the forums. It's kind of poetic in a way. The forums were stripped from us for a bunch of reasons. Increasing moderation demand from player count increase, the Jared Pogi incident, the Quackity raids. There was just a lot on Roblox's plate when it came to maintaining the forums. Apocalypse Rising also died around the forums' dissolution. Not as officially as the forums were, but come on, does anybody in the year of our lord 2024 play this game seriously and legitimately anymore? No! It's just a script kitty playground, only populated by exploiters or unk status individuals taking a nostalgia trip. Hackers and exploiters are to blame because they quite literally drove away the player base with their cheats. The worst part about APOC dying is that there's nothing really to kindle the highs and nostalgia the original game invokes. It truly felt like a one-of-a-kind game, at least within the Roblox platform. It's a sad sight to behold for such a behemoth of a franchise. Rest in peace, Apocalypse Rising, and rest in peace, the forums. Apocalypse Rising was a Roblox cornerstone with a sad end. Much like the forums. Forum parties were just breaks to have fun with people who would become your close friends if the cards were right. If you want to know more about the social or cultural aspects of the forums, check in next week where I give a general retrospective on what it's like being a former, including my insight and the insight of several other formers. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this casual dive into the niche cultural aspect within a defunct corner of Roblox. Uh, bye bye.